Hey, how's everybody doing this week? Um, I know maybe this has been a difficult week for you. There's a lot of uncertainty going on in our country. And um, I just wanted to talk for a minute about what I see amongst believers as kind of can be a, um, maybe an extreme position. And I'm not talking about conspiracy theories or anything else, but I'm talking about um, putting maybe too much hope into a politician or an elected official or somebody that we count on. Now, as a believer, I do believe that we should always try to choose the candidate whose positions, when we, particularly when we get down to two, whose positions most closely align with Scripture and with our values. I mean, it, there's never such thing as a perfect person. But I think one of the things that we need to be careful about is about seeing that um, more there than there really is. You know, I've seen different people posting that, you know, God sent the last president to save America. Um, that's not true. God doesn't need to save America. God already sent a savior and his name was Jesus. And while I, I'm fi perfectly fine with us um, being passionate about the people that we, that we believe should be in office and, and um, I, don't, I don't have any problems with that, I think we need to be very careful about um, what I think is kind of a habit of just overlooking every fault and seeing them as being, you know, superhuman or more than they are. And the fact is that um, all, everyone has faults. And, you know, I was reading in Psalm 101, it says, I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. I will not endure conceit and pride. I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house, and liars will not stay in my presence. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. Now, we don't live in a predominantly Christian nation anymore, and so the truth is going forward that most of our candidates um, are probably not going to be um, as strong of believers, perhaps, as we are. That doesn't mean that, they, that God can't use them. It doesn't mean that, um, that, that we shouldn't vote or that we shouldn't take place in the process. But when I read this passage, you know, one of the things that, that I think we need to be careful about is becoming too attached to a specific candidate or to a specific person. You know, here's what he said. He said, I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Um, it, it doesn't mean that we can't be a part of the political process, but also be careful about putting um, too much spirituality on people who are not spiritual. Um, I, I think that's a danger. You know, I, I think the last president did a good job. I think he did a lot of really positive things, but I also see some, some character flaws and some issues. And you're going to see that in every candidate. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that in a critical way. But when I see people that keep kind of lifting him up or lifting this candidate up or that candidate up or whatever as though he's the person that's going to save America and this kind of savior complex, it, it, I see some danger there. We need to be very careful. Whether you think Biden is the guy or you think Trump was the guy or you think whoever the next one is, they're politicians. And God can use them. They can do some great things. And there's usually one that I prefer – over the other one because of their viewpoints and the things that they say they're going to do. But we need to be careful about becoming more attached to them than they really deserve. Just because they, we share some uh, beliefs with them. And, you know, that's going to make it difficult for us as believers because there was a time when it was, uh, it was pretty much a requirement. If you want to get elected in the United States, you had to be a Christian. And I don't, really believe that's true anymore. I think they still, in some ways, candidates give lip service to it. And I'm not, it's not my position to judge whether or not, you know, either Biden or Trump are saved. Um, you know, they both claim to be. And I, I think you can view their actions and determine a certain amount, but we have to be careful about that. But you know what David said was, my daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. Now, our job is not to kick people out, but it is to be able to, as believers, to 
to continue to call right, right, and wrong, wrong, no matter who does it. And we should be willing to stand up and say to somebody that we prefer as a candidate, hey, that's wrong, when they do something wrong, just as we ought to be prepared to stand up and say when the person we don't want to get elected, when they do something right, to say, hey, that's right. Um, I, I think that's how we as believers can maintain our credibility through all these things. Um, be careful about selling out beyond what somebody is really deserves. And, um, you know, I was disappointed in the last election, very disappointed. <clears throat> but we're at a point now where whether it turned out the way I wanted, whether things happened the way I liked, it's been settled and it's time to move forward. And as a believer, um, I'm going to stand up and oppose the things that I think are wrong as much as I can. And the next election, um, hopefully we'll have another choice. And maybe it'll be somebody that um, we can put more hope in. I don't know. But I think we need to, we just, it, it's really a lesson. It's not really about politics, but just be careful about putting so much expectation and so much hope in a person because people fail. You know, they're, you're not going to find a perfect husband or perfect wife because people fail. Now, they, they may be the right person for you, but it doesn't mean they're not going to let you down. They will. And if you're always looking for, if you're single and you're always looking for the perfect person, you're always going to be disappointed. You need to find the one that God has intended for you and that is a believer and that meets other qualifications of Scripture. It doesn't mean they're not going to sin. They will. Every candidate's going to sin. Every, every candidate's going to um, make mistakes. And that's part of it. But we need to be very careful <clears throat> to maintain that our first loyalty is to God. Um, I love my country. I, I, you know, I have very specific ideas about how I want it to go in the future. But my allegiance to God is way above, is above my country. You know, my allegiances go from um, God, family, to the ministry that I have that God's given me, and then my country's after that. You know, and that's those are those are my priorities, and I, and I want to do what's best for America. But I'm depending upon God for the outcome, not on a candidate and not on an individual. And when we put all our hope in a candidate and things don't work out the way we want, it, it can really send us into a, a depression or whatever else. So make sure that you're putting your hope in the right place. There's only one that's worthy of all your hope, and that's Jesus. There's only one that's never failed you, and that's Jesus. There's only one that will never fail you in the future, and that's Jesus. Hey, we do the best we can, and then we move on. I hope you guys will have a great week. Um, I want you to understand that was none of this was meant to be political. And I get it. Some of you are vehement fans of one candidate or the other, and I'm 100% fine with that. I'm just trying to caution you that there's only one that you can really trust that will never let us down. So um, that's my job as a preacher. <laughs> so I uh, hope you guys have a great week. God bless you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you Sunday either in person uh, or online. Bye.